Hello brothers and sisters, welcome to part two of Raptured into Heaven or Fleeing to the Wilderness. Now, in part one, I had my disclosure of faith, which I believe that Jesus Christ came down in the flesh. He was God, come down in the flesh, born of a Virgin Mary, conceived of through the Holy Spirit of God Jesus walked the perfect walk on this earth as an example for us then he took in all your sins then he was persecuted and hung on the tree hung on the cross and was killed for your sins then he was buried he was in the grave three days and three nights and then rose from the dead. The father raised him from the dead because he knew no sin and the grave could not hold him. Then he went before the father as a sin offering for us. And he stayed 40 days on the earth before he made his final ascension into heaven to sit on the right hand side of the almighty God the Father until he comes back during his second coming to set up the kingdom of heaven on earth with the starting with the thousand year reign That is my faith, that is my belief. And that is my testimony to all those who want to come to the faith of Jesus Christ at this moment. And you believe he died on the cross for your sins. He came as God in the flesh to save you. Look in the description box below. There's a prayer of salvation. Say that prayer with all your heart and all your soul. And then go get baptized by a true saint of God who are keeping the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus, faith and testimony of Jesus Christ. Get baptized them. Get baptized in water. The true baptism will come upon you through the Holy Spirit by Jesus Christ okay now with that um, out the way I also believe that Jesus Christ came to save the whole world every last person who accepts the truth of what he did for them by faith and who also obeys the commandments of God and keep the faith of Jesus Christ. Now with that said. Um, let's go on with discussing. Uh, Israel. The bride of Christ. The woman. So in part one, you discover that you was Israel, that you're the you're Israelites, grafted into the promises. Whether you Jew or Gentile, you are the new Israel that Jesus Christ is talking about. Whether you are um, an Edomite, whether you are um, a Hamite. A Ish Ishmaelite, whether you are of any race out there, whether you're black, you're white, you're brown, you're yellow, you whatever colors they want to put upon you in this world, all that doesn't matter inside of his body. Race, creed, and color doesn't matter in his body, because you all become him you put on his face according to Galatians chapter 6 chapter 3 verse 26 through 29 
So now that you know you're the woman, we can go to Revelations and get an understanding of Revelations chapter 12 now. You see, it explains who the woman is in verses 1 through 5. The woman is Israel. But you didn't know that you were the new Israel in Christ's body. So now you can read verse 6 and get an understanding. And the woman fled in this, where she hath a place prepared of God, that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and three score days. Isn't that three and a half years? So this woman, the bride of Christ, Israel, is going to flee into the wilderness. But you got to understand, this is not just talking about the physical descendants of Israel fleeing into the wilderness. It's not just them. It's those who are in the body of Christ. And nobody can sit here and judge and say, Oh, that person is not going to get saved because they're not in the body of Christ. Because Christ said he's going to destroy them. No. Those who are in, in the body of Christ, Jesus said they lose their identity. Go read Galatians chapter 3 and study it. Uh, chapter 3, verse 26 through 29. Study that intently until you get a good understanding who Christ is talking about. Who is in his body and what they become. When they get there, they become this woman, and the woman fled into the wilderness, where she had a place prepared of God, that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and three score days. So she's gonna be in this wilderness for three and a half years. Go to verse fourteen. And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle, that she might fly into the wilderness, into her place, where she is nourished for a time, and times, and half a time from the face of the serpent. So here it is again. The Lord is cluing you in again. That this woman, Israel, the bride of Christ, is going to be given the wing, two wings of an eagle. That she might fly into the to wilderness, into her place. Because God prepared this place. For three and a half years. Because time means uh, one year. And time means two years. You add them together, that's three years. And half a time means half a year. So you got three and a half years from the face of the serpent. So the great tribulations is actually three and a half years, isn't it? We got two witnesses right here. It's stating it three times, two times. Let's 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 catch that a third time. And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemy, and power was given unto him to continue forty two months. Is it forty two months, three and a half years? But who is this person that's talking about giving power? Well, it's the Antichrist, the false prophet. It's the beast and the beast system. It's going to have power for three and a half years. It's telling you, three and a half years, this beast will have power. If it was seven years, it would have told you seven years. God is not a liar and a deceiver. He puts it all in his book. He would not do nothing without giving it to his prophets. So he didn't leave nothing out. You want another witness? Turn to Daniel chapter 7 verse 25. God always have a second witness. Remember, if he's going to say it to one prophet, he's going to have another prophet say it too. And he shall speak great words against the Most High. Who is it talking about? This Antichrist, this beast, this false prophet, the whole system. And shall wear out the saints of the Most High. So the saints that don't make it to this place of safety in the wilderness, he's going to come after them. As it says in Revelations chapter 12, verse 17, the dragon went after the remnant of her seed, after the woman's seed. Okay. And think to change times and laws. And they shall be given into his hand until a time and times and the dividing of times so right here is saying that those who don't make to the place of safety is going to be given into the hands of the beast for three and a half years remember time is one year and times is two years you add them together that's three and the dividing of times is half a time which is three and a half years 
So brothers and sisters, how was you deceived into believing that the great tribulations is seven years? When you got two witnesses telling you it's actually three and a half years. You got the Holy Bible telling you three and a half years. Why do we still believe in man and their wicked lies? Um, this is how you were deceived. Go to Daniel chapter 9 verse 27. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. You see, they took this verse and told you it was Satan. But you got to think about something. 90% of the Christians are not going to make it. But everybody is telling you, most of the Christians out there are telling you that this is Satan confirming a covenant with many for one week. And we know that one week means seven years. And for those who don't know, in this particular verse, this week means seven years. So, who is the he is talking about? It's talking about Jesus. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. And in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice and oblations to cease. This is Jesus confirming the covenant. It's not talking about a covenant is coming the, the covenant which already existed before Jesus Christ even came it's foretelling Jesus Christ coming to fulfill the covenant to fulfill the laws and the prophets that's the covenant so but in the middle of that remember Jesus Christ um, lived three and a half years after uh, once he started his ministry at, at the age of 30, three and a half years later, that's when he was, he was killed and sacrificed on the cross for our sins. So he fulfilled half of that final week of Daniel. Remember Daniel? Some of y'all may not know about Daniel's 70th week. Well, Jesus started to fulfill that final week. Three and a half years he fulfilled that final week. He still has three and a half years to finish it. This is the reason why there's only three and a half years stated over and over again in the Bible. But you cannot bring up any scripture that tells you that the beast will reign for seven years. Or the saints will be given into the hands of the beast for seven years. I challenge each one of you to find any scripture that says that. If you don't find it, you have to trash that lie. I, I'm proving to you right here, this is talking about Jesus. He's the one that caused the sacrifice and oblation to cease. And the proof of that was when the temple, the veil of the temple rent in two. The veil of the temple tore in two as a witness that Jesus Christ sacrificed itself to become the final sin offering for our sins. And from that point on, he caused the sacrifice and oblation to cease. Now, there is a replica coming up, a replication of this coming up. And it does speak about that when uh, they're going to rebuild the temple and they're going to start the sacrifice again. And this evil one is going to try to. He, he's going to cause the sacrificing and offering to cease. By claiming he is God in the temple of God. So he's doing this imitation replica thing. But really he's not stopping nothing because Jesus already stopped it. Jesus stopped it 2,000 years ago. That's right. Jesus is the finisher of things, not Satan. Satan, not, he just replicating. And, and it's, it's a lie. He can't make no covenant um, with Israel. Israel is the children of God. And I'm talking about the true children of God. 
Now he can make a covenant with all the other ones. The Christians uh, who separate themselves from Israel, who don't know their Israel. The Muslims who, who also um, turned on the faith and ran to Muslim Muslimhood because they didn't know the truth. And I'm talking about the black ones as well. The white and the black folks and the Mexican folks who are running to Islam because they're finding out Christianity isn't what it's supposed to be. That's because you're not supposed to be a Christian. You're supposed to be an Israelite. All right. Now that you understand this truth, how you've been lied to and deceived about the seven-year tribulation, which is only three and a half years, that you've been lied to about uh, this being Satan making a covenant with many for, four, for one week. And now you know the truth that Satan is going to try to imitate that. So... Let's go on to um, Israel is brought into the no no. When does the Great Tribulation start? Let's take a look at that. Can y'all answer that? I'm pretty sure a lot of you can. Go to Matthew chapter 24. Y'all are getting truth today, whether you like it or not. Matthew 24 and verse 15 through 16. Um, before 15 and 16, the Lord warned you of things that's going to happen. Like the first warning says, is take heed that no man deceive you. And then he goes on about you're seeing wars and rumors of wars. There's going to be pestilence and famines and earthquakes in diverse places. But these are the beginning of sorrows. Then they shall deliver you up to afflict you and kill you. And you shall be hated for his name's sake in all nations. And many which shall be offended and hate one another. False prophets shall rise and see many. Brothers and sisters. The Lord is telling you that all these things are going to happen before the great tribulations begin. Uh, verse 15 says, When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation, speak, spoken of by Daniel the prophet, standing in the holy place, who shall readeth, let him understand, then let them be in Judea fleeing to the mountains. Drop down to verse 20. But pray ye that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day, for then shall be great tribulations, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, nor, no, nor ever shall be. Now, this is when the great tribulation is going to start. When you see the abomination desolation, spoken of Daniel the prophet, standing in the holy place. Whoso really let him understand. Then you are to flee. Those being Judea flee into the mountains. Now this is talking about Israel now. Israel, if you are in Judea, flee into the mountains. But also Revelation chapter twelve tells you to flee into the wilderness. Now God is putting these things together for his saints to understand. You're going to flee into the mountains in the wilderness where God has a place prepared for you for three and a half years. And he's going to give you two wings of a great eagle to get there, to fly into the place um, where you're going to be nourished for three and a half years from the face of the serpent. Now you know that this is talking about Israel, all who believe in by faith, keep the commandments of God and testimony of Jesus, you're fleeing to the wilderness. Um, turn to Daniel chapter 9 verse 27. Uh, we're not going to go over what Daniel the prophet said. 
because we kind of went over what's going to happen. The false antichrist is going to do a repeat of what Jesus did in in Matthew's, I mean, in Daniel chapter nine, verse twenty-seven. He's going to do a repeat of that, and that's spoken of in in uh, in, a, in this book of Daniel, in chapter seven. Um, or eight somewhere before that it, it, it breaks down what the beast is going to do but I want to give y'all a little bit more insight on um, 26 and 27 to give you understanding of how did these people lie to you? How did they do this? Who did this to you? How did they do it? Well, you have to do some history homework about Rome, the Roman Catholic Church, the popes, and the Pope Papacy and the Vatican to get an understanding of what happened to the Word of God in their hands. But first, let's read 26. Daniel chapter 9, 26. And after three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself. And the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. And the end thereof shall be with a flood, and unto the end of the war desolations are determined. Now we know Jesus Christ came, died on the cross for our sins, and caused the sacrifice and oblation to cease. So verse 2, verses two um, sentences in birth, both chapter 26 and 27 together the second one and the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city sanctuary you can also drop down and read the next part of verse 27 and put that together with them and for the overspreading of abominations he shall make it desolate He's talking about the city and the sanctuary. He's going to make Jerusalem desolate or ruin. That happened in 70 AD when the people of the prince, which was Rome, the Grecians, and the people of Prince Esau, which is the Edomites, who helped Rome, spoken of in Abadea chapter 11. I mean, uh, Abadea verse 11. Or is it Abadiah? Abadiah, verse 11. They helped Rome destroy the city and the sanctuary. So, some of the Grecians and the top levels, and some of the Edomites on the top levels, helped destroy the city and the sanctuary. But who is this prince that's talking about? It's talking about Satan. Satan is their prince. And the people are the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary so now that you know that Rome is Satan's people not all of them now that you know that Esau is Satan's people but not all of them so I'm not sitting there saying convicting all the Caucasian people just so that you know that um, but we pretty much know who are the Caucasian people who are ruling and reigning this world right now as the Gentiles and a lot of them is the Jews who say they are Jews and are really not they rule the banking system and Hollywood in Israel they divided God's land back in 1948 these are the people of the prince. Evidence already came out that 90% of the Jews who are in Israel today are Khazars from the kingdom of Khazaria, which was Caucasian people who fled into Poland, Germany, and many countries in that area when Russia or when they were overran. Uh, when their kingdom was taken 
but they were mere converts. History shows that they were converted by one of their kings. And the king was going to choose either Judaism or Islam. He chose Judaism and he ordered everyone into the faith and the commandments of God. And they walked by their way of a sense. Over time, their people started to believe that they were Israel. They was the Israelites. They was Israel. Of course, the very top level knew otherwise, but the rest of them didn't didn't know. So, this part portion is very crucial for you to understand who the people of the prince are. So you have Rome, the Roman Catholic Church, the Pope Papacy, who is the people of the prince, took over the word of God. And they incorporated all sorts of paganism when Emperor Constantine took over Christianity. And over hundreds of years, as they gained control, full control of Christianity, or let's say the Israelite movement, that's when they did their little crusades. I ain't gonna say little, they did these horrible crusades to go kill the Protestants, the people who knew the truth, who kept the faith of God. The Lord said that before the great tribulation began that his saints would be killed. But he was talking about during that whole period of time, starting with his first saints, the disciples who were the apostles being killed all the way through, all the way to the end till he come back. So Satan's people is in control of this world today. The Grecian people and Esau, both together. Caucasian people we're just dealing with truth that doesn't mean if, if you're a Caucasian it doesn't mean that you're a part of their movement if you're in the body of Christ you're not you you're not Esau you're not Japheth you're not a Grecian you're not Roman you're not a Christian you're not a Roman Christian you are an Israelite if you're in the body of Christ you lose your identity so this is what happened to Christianity over hundreds of years. This is the reason why you have this type of Christianity today. And all the preachers, pastors, ministers go to the same school that, a, that Rome is in control of, the Vatican. They write the policies and everything for Christianity, whether the protesters like it or not. They have to go through Rome to get their minister's license and become preachers and pastors and open up their own churches. They have to do the 401k thing, I mean the uh, 401c. Brothers and sisters, this is who is in control. This is why the beasts have deceived so many. This is the reason why Christianity cannot pull together and come together in any way at all because you're still under the hand of the beast. Only Israel, Israelites, will make it to the place of safety that believe where you have to go. And we're going to get to that in the next video. Where exactly do you have to go? Because it tells you where you have to go. This place is separated by God and it's going to be protected by God as Psalms 91 says and we're going to pick it up with Psalms 91 and read that now that you know the woman you know you're going to flee into the wilderness and the secret place of the most high you're going to hear about how God is going to protect you there while you're there in the secret place of the most high the place prepared by God in the wilderness go to part 3 thank y'all for staying this long thanks for bearing with me those who have made it this long know the truth and are awakening or maybe you were just awakened all the way to the to the truth. This is why I had my awakening so I can help the very few that will awake.
Remember, only few will make it. Jesus doesn't lie. In the book, it says few will make it. To me, that's like 10% of all Christians. We're not even talking about all the other people, all the other ones. We're talking about those who are calling themselves Christians. 10% of them are the ones that's going to be saved. Whether they make it in the place of safety or get changed, are they going to be at the end of the Great Tribulations, going into the thousand year millennium reign, still alive and unchanged? All right, let's discuss something that needs to be discussed as well. Something you need to know. Now, now that you know that Rome is the people of the prince, the Grecian people, and Esau, there is a great deception, y'all. Jesus Christ tried to warn us about this deception. Jesus tried to warn us of something in Matthew chapter 24. Verse 4 through 5. Let's take a look. Now, the disciples asked him a question. What shall be the sign of thy coming and the end of the world? Jesus said, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Drop down to verse 11. And many false prophets shall arise and shall deceive many. So Jesus was trying to warn you of. He was warning. Remember he's warning the body of Christ. Those who believe in him. And he's trying to tell you that. The very preachers, pastors, ministers that you trust so much. And who worship. Who have you going to church on Sunday. These very preachers, pastors, and ministers shall say that he is Christ and shall deceive many. How are they going to do that? That's because they're going to be preaching in his name and pointing toward a different Jesus Christ. And shall deceive many. Well, who is this other Jesus Christ? It's the Caucasian, European broad, Roman Christian Jesus. That doesn't match the biblical Jesus at all. That's this other Jesus and his preachers and pastors and ministers this false Jesus has his own preachers, pastors and ministers preaching this word to you but leading you away from the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus Christ and Paul tries to warn you as well go to 2 Corinthians chapter 11 2 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 4. For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if he receive another spirit which we have not received, or another gospel which ye have not accepted, he might well bear with him. So we know that when the Roman Catholic Church took over with the popes and the Pope Papacy in the Vatican and the Roman Emperor Constantine, they gave you this image of Jesus Christ being a white man with long straight hair. This is the other gospel that was brought forth by the Roman Christian system. Roman Christianity. And it came with its own gospel and its own spirits as well. How do we know this? Go drop down to verse 13. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ and no marvel for Satan himself is transformed into the angel of light so if Satan could be transformed to, to an angel of light so can his other fallen angels transform themselves into angels of light but we know that these apostles are transforming themselves into the apostles of Jesus Christ and they are false Apostles, Verse 15. Therefore it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness. Whose end shall be according to their works. Brothers and sisters, you had to understand this portion. 
you have to understand this. The very preachers, pastors, and ministers who are preaching to you on Sunday, which is a day that dishonors God when God ordained the Sabbath day, the seventh day of the week, as his day of worship. That's the only day that God asks us to keep holy in his name. And we couldn't even do that. We had to listen to a man tell us, oh, here's some reasons to get away from the Sabbath day and come to the Sunday worship, the day of Satan's worship. If you're still worshiping on Sunday, you're honoring the beast and the beast system that he set in place through Roman Emperor Constantine and the Roman Catholic Church and the Pope Papacy who enforces Christianity today, even to this day. That's why they had all those crusades and Spanish inquisitions, all the killings off of the Protestants who went against the Roman Catholic Church, who hijacked the Word of God and twisted and turned it into uh, uh, something that would never bring you to salvation, to the truth of Christ, to the real God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob to the real Jesus Christ. You'll never be able to follow him with this European Roman Christian system. They have their own form of righteousness, their own idea of what's civilized. That's the reason why they came over here and they killed off the Israelites that are already here in the land. That's right, the Israelites were here already. Second Esdras 13, 40 through 45. But anyway, uh, those that study this word will know Jesus and Jesus will know them because he's the one who has to open your eyes and awaken you to truth he's the one who got to uh, make sure that you are not deceived go to 2 Corinthians chapter oh I'm sorry 2 Thessalonians 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 uh, it says right here, um, verse 3, let no man deceive you by any means. So he, it starts off again through the hands of Paul, the warning. For that day shall not come except there come a falling away first. So what's the falling away? The falling away from the true word of God. Who has the true word of God these days? Certainly not Christians. It's those who know that they are Israelites. Whether they're Jew or Gentile in the body of Christ, they know they are Israelites. Let's move on. Um, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who's, who opposes and exalt himself above all that is called God, or that is worship, so that he, as God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things. And now... Ye know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. A lot of people say that this is the Holy Spirit being taken out of the way. Brothers and sisters. The saints will be taken out of the way. The ones who are to be saved before the great tribulations okay let's read on and then shall that wicked be revealed whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders so Satan can perform miracles too can't he all lying signs, wonders, and miracles. How many out there performing miracles, laying hands on people, and only getting partial healings, partial sight recovery, partial ear recovery, pain, only pain being relieved, but the whole symptoms? That's not Jesus. Jesus is a God of whole healings. You're not working under the hand of Christ. If you're not keeping his commandments, and the faith and testimony of Jesus Christ. 
you're working under the imposter Jesus Christ that we were warned to watch out for. You're working under the imposter spirits and the imposter gospel, which looks like a righteous face of uh, Christ and the gospel, but is not. It only leads to your destruction and the pit. Let's read on. And with all deceivableness of let me start over. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness and them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause God shall send them strong delusion, that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. So those who are following the beast go to school on Sunday. I mean go to church on Sunday. Those who are following the beast obey his laws but forsake the laws of God. Those who are following the beast. They may say the prayer of salvation but they don't keep the faith of Jesus Christ. They don't truly love him and follow and obey him. They are given over to a great delusion which is being revealed in this video. So go to number three so we can finish this off and you will learn where the place of safety is. Go to part three and please hit like, share and make a good comment.